Hey, you! Yes, you! What if I told you there was an incredibly cool weapon right under your nose? Why, why are you looking down? I wasn't being literal. Ugh. Okay, it's more like 20 feet to the left. Elden Ring is full of all kinds of weapons for all sorts of players using all kinds of play styles. And while there are many relatively basic weapons around the place that have very standard movesets, there are some that exist that are simply much more interesting than that. Ones that any player might consider getting their hands on. Ones that I would personally label as build inspiring. As such, today I will be going over seven more weapons that you really don't want to miss in Elden Ring, four of which coming from the Liernia region, two over from the Kaelid region in the east, and one, well, in the place you might least expect it, the Round Table Hold. That's right, there is a weapon in here, and it's pretty cool, too. If you go out onto the balcony where you talk to Rogier, and then choose to be crazy and jump off of the balcony itself, you will find yourself in a mostly closed-off room, and a fake invader will spawn spawn, bow, and give you the bow emote. Then after you kill them, a little blue teleport to entrance spot will spawn on the ground. Many, many players have had this encounter with this enemy, then use this portal to go just back to the entrance, because why wouldn't you? Well, this is why. If you instead head to the left side of the room, there is a crevice inside which is a door to a hallway that leads to a room in the back, of which is a corpse with the Cypher Pata weapon, which is essentially a holy incantation given physical form, a holy cipher that has the moveset of the hook claws, but with a really cool faith aesthetic going on and holy damage involved, as well as a unique Ash of War called Unblockable Blade, because, well, it's not like it's made of metal, it's made of faith. So this attack lunges forward with an unblockable attack. To use this weapon, you need 30 faith, and it scales exclusively with faith. Next up in the Liernia region on the western side, head to the foot of the four belfries, Site of Grace, then follow the path just a bit north where you will find some jellyfish guarding a cart, unless you have rendering issues like me, and then you'll just have death spat at you from close range. Either way, run up to the cart itself, grab the item which you'll soon realize is essentially a severed jellyfish head repurposed as a great shield. It's sort of really, really awesome. It also has a unique Ash of War in Contagious Fury, which makes it raise your attack power for a short time. This shield requires 20 strength and 14 dexterity to use. Thirdly, we have a weapon called the Crystal Sword. This is mostly notable for for being not only quite a pretty sword, but also scaling with intelligence and strength together, making this a decent early option for a battle mage. Find this by heading to the village of the alpacas. I know that's not how you pronounce that word, but there's no chance in hell I'm gonna pronounce it right, so I might as well say what I want. Head to that site of grace, which you first access by heading through this massive cave, spanning the entire southwest section of Liernia, and then sticking to the left-hand side. From that site of grace, head across the bridge immediately next to you, then just over 20 feet away is your crystal sword. Congratulations. Congratulations. Fourth up comes the Urumi, which is, for all intents and purposes, a whip sword. Yeah, a goddamn whip sword, a flexible sword. This thing is absolutely badass, and while it doesn't have a unique Ash of War, it does have quite the unique change to the regular strong attack of the whip type weapons. Instead of just doing a cross attack in front, it then also ends with a very deep lunging thrust, extending the weapon out to its full length. This is genuinely just a better whip. For anyone who likes the idea of using a whip weapon in Elden Ring, it's just better. In order to get this beauty, head to the manor upper level, Site of Grace, in the Caria Manor, which is on the northwest side of Liernia. From there, go down the elevator, then down two flights of stairs, jump off immediately to your left, turn right, cross the bridge, and then just off to your left is a corpse holding the Arumi. No effort at all, significant sweet rewards. This weapon requires 19 dexterity and 10 strength to wield properly. Fifth on today's collection agenda is another weapon for you spell sword types. This one is much more magic based. It doesn't really require a whole lot of strength or dexterity. It's just very int based. Maybe those of you who like katanas might find something cool here. This is called the Moon Veil. To receive this weapon, head to the Gale Tunnel entrance right on the border of Kaled. Follow it until you reach the boss at the end, a cute little magma worm boy who will happily drop for you not only his dragon heart, but also his secret magical katana. This weapon scales mainly with intelligence as well as having a unique 
Cash of War, where if you have the amount of intelligence to wield it correctly, which I unfortunately don't, the Draw Slash will fire out blades of magical energy. So, you know, it's pretty damn badass. In order to use this weapon, you need 23 intelligence, 18 dexterity, and 12 strength. Penultimately, we have a much bigger sword that is also somewhat magic-based, just a very different kind of magic. The Magma Worm's Scale Sword. This thing is a curved greatsword with a nice moveset, and also comes with a unique Ash of War, Magma Guillotine. Grabbing the sword in both hands, jumping forward to slam down and trigger a blast of magma. This sword is found by first heading to the Ravine Veiled Village site of Grace at the end of the river in the northeast of Liernia. Then follow up through the path until it brings you to another boss. This time, once again, it is a Magma Worm. Though, unlike the last Magma Worm at 50% health, he will start to walk around on two legs so you can't abuse his squishy, squishy head. Upon death, he will drop another Dragon Heart as well as the Magma Worm Scale Sword. To use this weapon, you need 24 Strength, 18 Faith, and 15 Dexterity. Finally, in today's roundup, then, is one that I absolutely adore personally. I have a really big soft spot for flails, okay? I, I can't really explain it. Something about the predictable momentum of a big spiky ball on a chain makes my brain happy, and Elden Ring does have some nice flails, one of which is called the Family Heads. This is a flail made of skulls. It can also deal magic damage and slightly scales with intelligence, but is mostly a dexterity weapon. On top of this, it has an incredibly cool and unique Ash of War that summons a bunch of wraith projectiles above your head to home in on your enemies. How cool is that? To get this weapon for yourself, it sort of comes together with what we've been doing already. Before this weapon, we had to head up the ravine and defeat a magma worm boss. Well, after defeating him, you find an elevator which brings you up to the plateau and to a site of grace called Abandoned Coffin. From this site of grace, travel directly north and then nestled into the cliffside in front of you will be the entrance to a cave. Travel your way down, taking down obvious illusion walls along the way. Eventually, you will reach a waterfall. On your left in this section is another illusion wall with some chests behind it, but don't be fooled, in here, in this little crevice, is another illusion wall hiding a boss fog wall. In here is a boss called Necromancer Garrus, and once you kill him, you will be rewarded with a number of skulls hanging off of a stick. In order to use the Family Head's weapon, you need 18 dexterity, 16 intelligence, and 8 strength. All right, everyone, this has been a roundup of seven more weapons that you don't want to miss in Elden Ring. Have you found anything cool I've not talked about yet that you want to share with everybody? I, I can't wait to see what else this game has in store for us. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye